So this project that you guys just saw is made up of several relatively complex scenes, but I used this kind of workflow that I'm not sure if anyone is really doing this but me. Um, it's highly possible, but I just wanted to make a quick video and let you guys in on what this is really made of. So back here, you may see that this is a big image texture. Um, so if you come over here to this mid journey bot, you can see right away, this is the prompt. And I found that for mid journey, the best way to go about it is using kind of description words. So separating it by commas. Um, so you can see here, and then especially like I, things like iPhone photo and unedited since iOS has a relatively, you know, similar, like lifelike kind of color profile. That was just a image texture. And then for everything in the foreground, what we wanted to do is really sell that this scene is three dimensional. So these by do, by doing it this way you definitely run the risk of making everything look super flat so you need to really go above and beyond in this sort of foreground scene to make it not that way so what we did here is uh, a little a little particle a little particle system to let's see i don't know it's pretty basic like ember stuff except it's just it, it looks like dust um and then we have some airport chairs since airports are covered with chairs obviously and then a suitcase um, which we actually, if we go into the solid view, we can see that the suitcase is actually rolling here because um, we, we really just want to sell the realism of the foreground. Um, and then the last thing to really make this this project seem believable or the scene be believable is we actually have this little plane. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention all of these all of these models are actually and textures are from Blender Kit, which uh, which you can get from my link for ten percent off. But basically, it's just this model and texture database. Um, so I did like I, I think I searched airplane or maybe maybe plane actually. But what you see right here is this little model plane. Yeah, here it is. It's this one. Um, which actually animates. So if you look at the timeline, it just adds a little more depth to that scene. So it makes it look like there are not only objects on the inside um, really selling that 3D realism, but if you look, uh, if you look right here, you can see that we actually have a plane outside. Um, so something believable for that airport. And forgive me because I'm doing this all on a MacBook. So this real-time cycles rendering is not easy. Uh, for the second scene. We have a cocktail bar, um, once again, very, you know, very flat background, but we needed to sell that. So, um, so this time we did that through lighting. And actually I forgot to mention that on this first one, we did it through lighting as well. This right here is a big, is a big lamp. Let's see. It's like, can you guys see that? Yeah. It's like a thousand Watts, 28.6 degrees spread. So relatively tight. So right here, we sort of carry over the same idea, um, where we're really selling that foreground. So that is, uh, I don't know what this model is called or even how to find this again, but it was, oh yeah, bar ceiling shelf. So yeah, I just wanted a little ceiling shelf, something to drop down in the, in the middle of the scene. And then just like in a real bar or in kind of like a moody tavern, um, the lights are going to be a little more spotlight-esque. So really in any of these scenes, whatever you end up doing, you're just going to want to go really hard on looking at reference images and make sure that you're matching the vibe of whatever scene you're trying to recreate. So. Um, you know, a, a relatively tight spread on this one. And then you can see that this is kind of airing on the warm side, almost like a beige um, at 3.5 watts. So that's just going to cast a nice shadow, put the, put the product itself in good lighting. Once again, forgive me for the UV unwrapping here. Um, but then we have a wine glass and a bottle of Heineken to really, you know, just sell the, the bar scene. For this locker room scene, we have some kind of cooler toned, like if you look here, this is like a blue. Um, and then a, yeah, and then a pure white and then another blue, um, all with kind of a tight spread because we want those sharp shadows again. And, uh, you know, locker rooms, what do they have? They have lockers, benches, concrete floor, um, all of these grabbed straight out of Blender Kit. There actually wasn't any AI in this, um, but the next one, the yoga studio, this entire scene was actually uh, this, you know, basically AI. And some people have like a moral issue with AI, which I, I, I definitely understand to a degree. Um, people also think that it takes the, you know, create the creativity out of art. And I agree with that to a degree as well. But in this situation, you know, I could make all of this in Blender. I really could make an orange yoga mat, some wood floors, whatever, but then it would just take forever to render all of that lighting realistically. When if I'm just using this for a background in a scene for, you know, half a second or two, you know, one second, um, this is increasing the productivity like crazy while still giving me a, you know, a very acceptable outcome. So for this next scene, uh, this is the car actually, I, 
found out that the owner of this company of, or the client for this project um, actually has a Porsche Taycan in person, like in real life. So, you know, what, what better to do than to actually put his car in the animation? Um, found that through Instagram, by the way. And then in the real version, I put the logo that is on the package on the building. So it kind of looks like a headquarters, like, you know, home office type of deal. Um, but other than that, this one was a relatively simple blender kit build. Um, I think I did like office building or something. I typed like office. Um, it's one of the, yeah, it's this one right here. So this, this was just kind of dragged and dropped into the scene to use as a background, uh, grab some palm trees from blender kit as well. You can search palm tree and it's this one right here. Uh, once again, just drag and drop. For here, we just have a, a sky texture. Then for the palm trees, a little bit of Blender Kit. And then these clouds are actually from Blender Kit as well. Whoever made these, I mean, it's super helpful. And yeah, I mean, obviously there's ways to enhance and you know make these scenes super realistic using, using the exact methods I talked about just to a greater extent. But yeah, I've yet to see anybody on YouTube do like a mid-journey type workflow to this extent. Um, obviously, all of the areas that we used mid-journey can be replaced with photography or, you know, whatever else, modeling the scene out in full. But this is a way that I've found that you can be a very high output uh, artist for not that much work, not that much money. You know, I, I definitely see myself leaning into this kind of method a little more in the future. Um, but this was my first time kind of, kind of tackling it, and uh, I, I think it turned out pretty well. So if you guys enjoyed this one, please let me know with a like and a comment. Subscribe if you want more content like this. And if you want to join our free community, it has like 3,000 people. We all talk about, you know, getting clients and art and business and everything kind of related to that. So if you enjoyed this one, stick around for more, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.